spill some dirt on my wife. And she doesn't know about this either. <laughs> That's even better. Anybody want to give me dinner tonight? Because it's like it's feeling she's going to lock me out. What's that? Oh, and a play. Oh. Oh, maybe, maybe I need to spill dirt on my daughter instead. No, this isn't bad. This isn't bad. My wife, she drives me crazy. Because when she gets a book, one of the first things she does is she goes to the back to see how it ends. <laughs> that was your friend. <laughs> I mean, she just cuts, she just wants to know, bang, who did it, you know? And then I, I look at her and I go, well, if you know how it ends, what's the use of reading the story? But she goes ahead and she reads the whole story, has a great time. I, 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 you know, that, that's fine for you, I, you know, but it just drives me bonkers because I kind of like the unfolding, you know, and the, and the figuring out, there's no, nah, you know, say so she'll get a book, she'll be at the store, show, you know, and then she'll just go right to the back. And I'll look at her, are you going to buy that book now? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, we're at the end of the book of Zephaniah. <laughs> Do you hear that? <laughs> How many times have you had a series of sermons of the book of Zephaniah in your life? You were the only one. And look at she's saying, yay! It's like every week we come out of Zephaniah. Well, the last seven weeks we have. We are at the book, end of the book of Zephaniah, and at the end of the book of Zephaniah, you find out who did it. Okay? I mean, it's just like the old story, you know? You read all the way through the book, some people do. And you get to the end and you find out who did it. And as we get to the end of the book of Zephaniah, God lets us in on something that is, if you haven't, if you haven't noticed it in the book already, you've, you haven't been paying attention, but he comes right out and states it, that he's been behind everything that has gone on in the life of Judah and in the events of the prophecy of Zephaniah. Take a look at me if you, with me, if you would, please, beginning in verse 17. He says, the Lord your God is in your midst, a victorious warrior. He will exalt you, or exalt over you with joy. He will uh, be quiet in his love. He will rejoice over you with shouts of joy. I will gather those who are grieved about the appointed feast. They came to you, O Zion. The reproach of exile is a burden on them. Behold, I am going to deal at that time with all of your oppressors. I will save the lame. I will gather the outcast. I will turn their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time I will bring you in, even at the time when I gather you together. Indeed, I will give you renown and praise among the peoples of the earth. When I restore your fortunes before the eyes of the Lord, or before, the, before your eyes, says the Lord. Now just take a look, if you would, please, at those, those one, two, three, four verses. And notice how many times that God mentions his name, mentions that he is there or mentions that he is doing something. I mean, it, it, you, you can't read a line of that prophecy without noticing that God says, it's me. I'm the one. Matter of fact, he starts off by saying, the Lord, your God, Yahweh. You're not just, not just your God in an impersonal sense, but there he uses the covenant name of God. That, God by, that name by which he revealed himself to the nation of Israel. He says, I am in your midst, a victorious warrior. Basically, he comes to the end of this book and he says to them, I won. In our struggling, in our problems, in our issues, I won. Judah, you've been unfaithful. I mean, you go back over here. Take a look. Let's start over at verse 1 there, Joyce. Let's go back to chapter 1, verse 1. You go back to chapter 1 and you hear some of the things that he says. I'll punish you on that day. You'll be silent before God. I've prepared a sacrifice and guess what? You're it. You know? He's thrown down some pretty hard words to these people. And at the end of the book he says, I won. I won. I am a victorious warrior. Well, what is it that God has won? Well, what he won was the fact that Judah had walked 
uh, in, in, or had abused their situation and walked in, in a path of unrighteousness. They had sinned against God. They had stuck their finger in his face. They had said, we know the covenant. We know what you've said. We know the promises. We know what we're supposed to be doing, but we're not going to do it. And God comes into their life and says, look, I love you so much. I can't allow this to continue. So I'm going to punish you. I'm going to discipline you. I'm going to judge you in your sin in order that you might turn and repent and come back into relationship. And at the end of the book, he says, I won. I got what I was after. Isn't that cool? I mean, sometimes we walk through life with the notion that God is somehow restrained and confined in our lives by circumstance and situation. And we say, oh, I don't know if God can do anything here. That's a pretty bad situation. I don't know if God can make a difference. You know, well, I hope, I hope that my 401k cooperates with God or I'm going to be in trouble. Well, I hope the government listens to God or our world's in trouble. I mean, we act as though as if God's somehow limited or confined. He's made it pretty clear to Judy here, what I wanted, I have accomplished. Matter of fact, there's a wonderful uh, passage of scripture out of the book of Isaiah that I really encourage you to kind of lock away because you'll come back to it several times in your life. It says this in verses 10 and 11 of Isaiah 55. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth, and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the season and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it out. God says, my word never is void. I have a purpose, I have a plan, I have an intention, I have a goal. I am sovereign God. I am Yahweh, your God, Judah. And my plan, which was to point out to you your sin and cause you to turn toward me and to judge wickedness has been accomplished. I win. God wins. God wins every time. Sorry, Dale, not like the Cowboys. Definitely not like the Cardinals. But God wins every time. So much so that he says he is a victorious warrior. Now to you and me, we just think, okay, he's saying that he's the guy that fights that won. But that's not, that's not what he says here. He's using a term in the Hebrew that was used of Gideon. Remember Gideon? Gideon was the dude that God said, you know, select a bunch of people. We're going to go fight against a bigger group. And Gideon got his little piddling army together. And God said, ah, you got too many. And he parred them down. He said, ah, you still got too many. And he parred them down. And he was left with like 300 guys against an army of thousands. And they went to battle and they won. And after that point, Gideon earned the title, a mighty man of valor. That's the same term used here. God is, in the vernacular of our day, God is the man. He is the the one who accomplishes great feats. He is the one that does things that you seem to think are impossible against all odds, against any obstacle. God is the man. And I mean no disrespect by that. I mean, he is the victorious warrior. He's the go-to guy. He's the one when it seems like there's just no hope, you call on him. Because he's the one that's going to pull us away through. That's what God's saying to them. Y'all have sinned. Y'all have walked in unrighteousness. Y'all have walked in darkness. And I saw you in that state and said, it's not good for you to be there. So my purpose is to judge sin. My purpose is to judge you and to cause you to repent, to turn back to me and to walk in relationship. And you know what, Judah? I'm in your midst. I won. Here I stand. We walk in relationship. Man, that ought to to encourage you. That really ought to. That ought to encourage you to know that, that in circumstances of life, when it looks like There is no hope that if you walk in relationship with God, there's no way you can lose. 
Now, hear me. I'm not saying that that doesn't mean you won't have hardship. I'm not saying that doesn't mean there's not going to be some struggle. 